Hi guys, PJ here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to remove the factory fitted radio on a 2003 Toyota Previa. It's not going to be a long video, it's a very straightforward thing to do, it's just figuring out how to access everything. Now an ideal thing to have when you're removing one of these radios is a plastic leverage tool such as this. This is made by Bojo, they're available off eBay for about a pound. It's a sturdy plastic leverage tool. If you attempt to use a screwdriver to remove trim, you will 100% dint the trim and make a mess of it, so don't. Try and find something like this. If, you, if you're not prepared to buy one, at least try and find something made of plastic, yeah? Because we have got to leave with the trim and we don't want to make a mess. We want to keep it factory fitted look, so uh, we don't want any damage. Now, the first thing you're going to do with this is insert it into the edge carefully. This is why you're not using anything metal. And then pop all the way around. This one's quite loose actually, it's uh, been out before probably. Looking at the air vent, yes it more than likely has been out before. So and then just quite literally coax it all the way around. It's on clips as you can see. Pull that forward slightly and you've got some connectors for uh, hazard warning lights and things like that. They're on little squeezy tabs so you just sort of pinch them and pull them out. So pinch the connector, pull it out. I need both hands to do that, so I'll do that shortly. So if the tab's pinched and pulled out, we can now remove the trim altogether. And as you can see, it's just a socket with a, a tab on the end to squeeze in. And there you're locating lugs all the way around it, just to put it back in again. Comes with the air vents, the whole thing comes out. We'll move that safely to one side. And obviously there's your hazard warning light switch. There's the blank one on this particular model, not used. So we've just push the pins in to pull them out, put that to one side safely. You're then looking at Phillips screws. One, two, three, four, down there. We're going to remove all those and then we're going to need to keep the mounting plates for the new radio if you are actually fitting a new radio. Now we're going to take all four of those out right now. Okay we've got all four screws now removed. You'll notice I've put a, a bit of a padding, a bit of cloth down over the, the fascia here. That's because when you drop this down, it's a steel uh, section and it's quite sharp edges. You don't want it catching the plastic down here and uh, basically taking a trunk out of it, making a mess of it. So it's just to rest it on because it's quite a big bulky unit. You pull it forwards a little bit. It is a little bit as well on these. And you've got access to, yep, more squeezy tabs. Just pinch and pull on every single one. There's some more down at the bottom here. Probably going to need both hands. Take all those out and then you're going to need a wiring harness adapter for your new radio. There we go. There's your radio plugs. Those two there and this other one here. Another plug that's uh, not radio related. Aerial here. Yeah. So if you're going to fit a new radio you're going to need an adapter like this which converts the Toyota plugs to what is known as a factory ISO. This is an ISO plug and basically you've got power and speakers and these are an industry standard. This should plug into 99% of aftermarket radios out there. This particular one that I've got here is made by Connects 2 and the part number, if we can get it to focus on, there you go, is CT20TY01. These are normally sort of 10, 15 pounds again off Amazon or eBay or such like. And a very handy thing to have, obviously you don't want to be chopping any wires. Nice plug and play. Our next job is going to be to undo the screws on the side and take the mounting plates off because we're going to be reusing those. Quick word of warning on these. Normally, well not normally, sometimes they can be that tight that your Phillips screwdriver will just round the head off inside straight away. And in fact these are that tight. So you'll be needing a 8mm socket to just go over the top there and undo them without damaging the heads. Normally just best to crack them using a ratchet. If you're fitting a single din unit rather than a double din, you can use these fascia adapters to make the hole the right size. They normally come with a, a loads of bits and bobs because they fit loads of different cars. Part number is by Auto Leads this is, and this is an FP1103. You do have to chop some tabs off these and put the right brackets on the side to get them to fit. But uh, there is full, full instructions with them. There you go. 
how to do that and what caused the fit, but a bit of improvisation is needed. Obviously, if you fit in a double DIN unit, then you can just use the metal plates off the side of the original radio, or you could just get a pocket and block the bottom gap using the metal plates, whichever you prefer, really. So on this particular installation, we're going with the original side plates that were bolted to the larger radio. As you can see, we've mounted them to the sides of the new single DIN radio, and I'm just going to mount a, a little pocket underneath And then it. this, with its new mounts, basically just goes, oops, get the camera in focus, there we go, onto the original position, yeah? And then you face your clip, 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 back over the top. I won't go into too much detail, because obviously if you've got this far, you already know how to uh, clip the fascia back on. Got our radio nicely mounted. We've used part of the plastic fascia trim that we ordered in there, the, uh, the kit that I showed you earlier. Um, we've used the Sony trim surround that comes with the radio. That's a Sony radio. It comes with a little plastic trim. Use that one there. So we've got a bit of a combo going on here, because none of the plastic brackets lined up perfectly, shall we say. It would have been a bit of a... Mm, not ideal okay so we've used the metal brackets which we know fit perfectly well there's your screws holding that in we've got our plastic tray in and i've actually uh, 3m padded it to the radio there you go six millimeter 3m pads do the job nicely like an adhesive pad uh, that's not going anywhere at all because unfortunately there's no mounts on the side of these brackets that come with them. You can get pockets that do have mounts to screw into, but if we were screwing into this, you'd just pop into the inside of it and make a mess of it. So uh, better to go this route. We're now free to plug it all in and get it fitted. So put your screws back in. Once you've clicked it in place, put your connectors in the back. And then obviously you want your plastic uh, fascia panel. Just grab that. There we go. Careful you slide it over. You don't want to damage anything. Watch your mounting lugs line up as they go in. There we go. Pop that on. Just give it a bit of a wiggle. There we go. Give it a bit of a tap all the way around so it click, click, clicks in. And that is your finished product. That's what it looks like. Looks nice and factory and uh, does the job well. Like I say, I have had to hybrid the, uh, the kit because in the kit you get all these bits and bobs, but they're not specifically for this car, it's like a Toyota generic kit and none of them lined up perfectly, we would have had a little gap around the edge, so not ideal, hence I've used the original parts and some of these parts, and I think you'll agree, that looks fine. Guys, if you've got any questions at all, pop them in the comments below, and thanks a lot for watching this video, goodbye for now.